Hey folks, and welcome to yet another edition of Helium Hacks Happy Hour. Uh, my name is Travis. I go by TT over on the Discords, and I'll be your host this evening. Um, I, I I was really excited about this show, and I got going a little early tonight, so we're we're gonna have to um, hold on for just a second and let let um, people kind of roll in uh, when the notification goes out. But um, we we have a fantastic show for you tonight. Um, uh, we have the team from Seed Studio with us, and we're going to be talking about the um, S2100 data logger, which is, I, I, I've got to say, pretty much my favorite L LoRaWAN third-party, you know, off-the-shelf device uh, that's out there right now. It's, it's, it's just, ex it's, it's ridiculously flexible. It's, um, you, you can really attach pretty much any sensor, I mean, non-LoRaWAN sensor, onto the Helium network with this thing. Um, and uh, you're gonna see something tonight uh, from these folks uh, with a device that I don't have yet, but I'm very excited about, which uh, effectively expands, you know, the sensors that you can put on this thing by hundreds. So um, um, I'd, li I'd like, to, uh, like to welcome you. Uh, we have Violet, Kevin, and Jacob with us uh, this evening. So um, they, and well, this morning, I'm sorry for, for them. <laughs> Um, it's, it is very early and thank you so much for being a part of the show. I know it's very early there, but, um, you know, th thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us and giving this talk. Thank you, Travis, to have me us. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Well, because I just back from us, so it's okay. The time is up. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, your, your team has been traveling, huh? So, um, yes. and, uh, for the last, uh, past two weeks. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you're, um, you know, back home and kind of getting, you know, settled back in. Um, I, I know uh, travel can take a take a whole lot out of you, but uh, uh, this evening, um, is, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things very quickly. Um, if you're new on the call, welcome. We we love to have new folks on the call. Um, I, I want to go ahead and, and get this going as quickly as possible today. So after, um, after we wrap up this talk, we can kind of deal, deal with that on the, on the back end of things. But uh, right now, I'd like to welcome the team from Seed and say, um, you know, thank you for joining us. And what are we going to be talking about tonight? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Travis. Uh, uh, I think a better way to start with an uh, introduction of ourselves. Yeah, uh, this is Kevin uh, from uh, Sys Studio, uh, also from uh, SenseCap team, and the uh, uh, product director. So very nice to meet you guys here, and uh, hope you have a wonderful happy hour today, and I have a wonderful day too. Uh, yeah. Hi everyone, this is Jinking, the product manager from Seed. Uh, happy to meet you all. Yeah. Hi everyone, this is Violet. I'm the sales consultant and business development manager at Seed. Very happy to meet you here. Thank you for having us, Travis. Hey, thanks for joining us. I'm excited about this. And so um, this evening, uh, we're going to be talking, or this morning, you know, whatever. We're, we're going to mm -hmm. be talking about the, the S2100 data logger, which... Um, uh, if anyone isn't familiar with uh, Seed, you just released your new uh, product catalog recently, which is yeah. what, what, 226 pages? I mean, it's, it's a beast. Uh, it's that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's something we haven't done before. This, uh, so we, well, yeah, so we put some resource and web everything together for the past 10 years and make it clear for our yeah, users, for the community. Because state has a lot of uh, product more than I can imagine. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, um, you know, I just saw, I had mentioned earlier, um, you know, before the call that a lot of people um, here on Hacks are using the Xiao uh, devices. And um, I just recently saw the new round displays that, um, that you have for those. Uh, yeah, that you can it's a uh, so happy indicator. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the um, what the that you can program with uh, LVGL. Yes. Those those are very slick. Yeah. Um, 
It's welcome you at Swen. We have a uh, hundred units in uh, manufacturing process. Yeah. Cool. Very excited. Yeah, also, yeah. Also today, I have uh, something called sensor build here, also based on uh, Shell and uh, Shell RP uh, twenty forty. And also open source. Yeah, today we all have fun. Uh, happy with that. Yeah, I have a set. I have a camera set up here. Uh, if you guys can see, um, if yeah, if, it looks if good. It, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I just put it here. Yeah, my face is not so pretty, so I just put uh, the the uh, set up here. Okay. All right. So what's next, Travis? Well, um, do you want to just walk us through uh, what we're talking about here with the data logger uh, to get us start uh, get us started? Oh, I have a yeah, I have a screen to share. Yeah, nice. Okay, That's great. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I just uh, yeah, get us started uh, for yeah for this one. If not so familiar with this studio, yeah, this so studio is a chain, uh, is a company. Uh, working on uh, the IoT hardware product. So it is hard, uh, it, it is uh, very deep into uh, community, especially, especially in the open source communities. Uh, it market, uh, target market is global and for developer, for system integrator. And uh, uh, now we um, probably working on the edge computing networking and uh, uh, smart sensor, uh, those stuff. And next, uh, yeah, this page will be very, uh, it will be more clear. So we're working on sensor network edge and cloud um, all in one. So also I have some uh, blockchain project like Tenum. Yeah, that's um, that's where SenseCap uh, uh, team are working for the past two years. And uh, and guess if you do not have, uh, 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 haven't watched the product launch uh, this year, here's a link. Um, I think about it, just send you in the chat room. You can uh, saw this slide, uh, submit test link. Uh, I'm not going to go through the product launch here because I think there might be some interesting uh, stuff. Uh, like the tracker, we just launched the tracker this year. Uh, very thin, just cast size, and also indoor door across the space. Also working with Helium and uh, Aurora, SimTech Cloud. Uh, it's, it's super thin. And so that's a lot of fun in this uh, event launch. I uh, hope you guys can enjoy uh, the video later. And today is we are more focused on the sensor network because our team is um, mostly uh, focused on the sensor network. And that includes sensor uh, and DTU and, uh, and get a data logger also called data and gateways. All right. Uh, yeah. Take two products as an example to show how SenseCap works and how to hack a sensor based on the uh, since cap S211 there, no sensor builder. Yeah, that's two part one, many focus on. And drinking uh, side me is uh, sitting inside of me is actually the product manager of the Laura one DTO S2100. And I think he will spend uh, oh, a few minutes to talk about the DTO right now. Yeah, uh, go ahead, drinking. Uh, well, I will quickly in, introduce the SenseCap Nora One DTO. And um, the SenseCap S2100 is a Nora One DTO. It's designed for remote data collection and uh, transmission. Uh, the Nora One DTO is specifically designed for agriculture, environmental, and uh, industrial applications. The SenseCap DTO has several features that make it idea for outdoor applications. These features include, first, it has strong capability with different sensors. It supports all RS485 Modbus RTU analog, like current and wattage sensor, GPIO 
next level or pass sensors. Uh, meanwhile, we will offer over 100 industrial sensors in this year. Uh, second, the DTO support the universal frequency plan in one device. You can select US 915 or EO or AS and other frequency plan in a uh, wild app. Then the DTO supports 19 ampere hour built in battery and uh, external um, 12 DC power. It has excellent transmission performance with range of two kilometers in urban and uh, 10 kilometers in line of size sense. Next, it's designed to use in harsh environments. But what? Um, uh, wide temperature and uh, IP66 rated enclosure suitable for outdoor use. Finally, we provide Sanscape Met app and Sanscape portal, allows owners to remotely manage data and configure overall. The detail is an ideal solution for different data collection applications. And uh, Kevin will introduce the details and uh, how to use the data logger. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, yeah, that's uh, Jingin just say the brief introduction of the data logger. Yeah, he has been working on this device for an uh, like, asking one years. Yeah, uh, uh, good, good job. And uh, later on, I will just presentation uh, what's the overall user experience. Yeah, I think uh, our purpose to design the sense cap. Um, uh, sensors is to uh, to make it uh, easy as easy as possible. So uh, the basic uh, working flow is just to use uh, sense cap mate app, yeah, to configure the device and uh, to scan the QR code on the uh, on the device and then it's bounded to your account. Then you will have see the data, or if you can, you guys can see my screen. Yeah, if, if you can see the data already in the screen. So no, no, need, no need to worry about uh, the, yeah, the council things, if you are not so familiar with that, but it's okay if you want to play with council, play with payload. Uh, we also support the public payload council. So no, right, no worry at all. And uh, I want to uh, show some special, yeah, because normally uh, doing the product introduction just to say how yeah, the product works, but I want to dive into the hardware uh, instead. Yeah, the I have a board uh, uh, taken out of the product. It's, uh, yeah, it's a PCBA with battery and uh, uh, here on board, you can see there's a wild E5 module. It's a E5 module, yeah, we design and it's uh, working as a man uh, MCU. It take care of the LoRa the driver application, and we have a, a, a dedicated BLE module to take care of the sensor configuration using the app and uh, taking care of the firmware OTA. And also you can see a very uh, thin, uh, antenna looks uh, lots of some uh, antenna like the uh, like the pin. So this antenna is is specially designed, and the communication communication distance is quite uh, is quite far. Uh, uh, like uh, in eyesight, it's just over ten kilometers. Uh, also, there's a terminal here. The terminal have multiple uh, ports uh, for power output for different uh, three volt, five volt, twelve volt for out, uh, to power in the external sensor on different levels. And also, uh, it uh, has some input uh, port like the IS485, uh, analog uh, current input, analog. Uh, voltage input. So today's demonstration later on, I will use in the analog voltage input as an example. Oh, of course, in the middle, there's huge battery and non-rechargeable 
uh, lasts for up to 10 years if you just uh, upload the uh, data in a low uh, uplink interval, yeah. Here uh, is, uh, is a picture, uh, some picture of the inside. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, uh, to see here, we have a uh, gasset and rubber gasset and the batting cover. That's uh, just for better waterproofing. And you can see there is a shining cover on the PCBA that's a com um, conformal coating. That's it's designed for if, what if, what if the, yeah, you take out the part and uh, not so well scored the devices that just uh, provide another protection if the water goes in. And also we put uh, something here is the white um, uh, sensitive paper. Uh, if water uh, goes in, it will turn red. That, yeah, that's something we also provide on the device. And uh, yeah, uh, let's have fun with uh, uh, how to use that. To use the sensors, you need to download the SenseCap Meta app. And after that, it's all supported on the iOS and, then, uh, and Google Play. And after that, all you need to do is to press a button for three seconds. And it will pop up on the app. The flash, the LED is flashing, and you will see. Actually, Travis has the setup too, but yeah, if you can see clearly on my screen, uh, it's a, uh, I just, uh, uh, can proceed with the demonstration. Yeah, choose the devices. There's the general information uh, about the devices, UI, you can copy that, the protocol, the uh, voltage and the firmware version. If there's a firmware, OT, uh, a new firmware coming out, there will proof to uh, get you to upgrade the firmware. And on the setting page, that's uh, something uh, we specially designed is uh, first you can choose different uh, platform, uh, like the network platform. Uh, you can choose, uh, yeah, Helium. You can, oh, actually, since CAP uh, deployed the console by their self uh, and will uh, take care of the uh, integration, and so in that case, that allows the device can get the data right away in the uh, portal, our portal, and also support Helium, Public Council, and other uh, platforms. And also you can just change the intervals here, uh, uh, five minutes to 10 minutes to one hour. And also there is a package uh, sending parties like uh, with confirm or without confirm. Uh, just to save the battery stuff, but if you in critical uh, usage, you can just uh, choose um, uh, with uh, confirm, two confirm, and one non confirm. And, and later, you will see the sensor settings and choose uh, the input. Uh, interface like GPIO, like analog input or IS45. Here, uh, I choose the analog, analog input and the power tab is, uh, you can say always on, always on chaos battery, but the devices support both uh, part by outside. So if you have a heavy power consumption sensor, uh, you can choose always on, but in some sensors, the super local power consumption, you just choose a periodic uh, uh, power. And the power voltage just to uh, goes out to power out uh, the sensor outside. And some sensor may have some warm up time, like CO2 sensor. Some might not just configure here. And then I'm gonna voltage input. Uh, there is some formula here. Um, uh, you can just send the configuration will be done, but yeah, yeah. Let me change one parameter, like two six minutes. 
and then send. And now the device already been configured. You come back to home and break the BOE connection or continue setting back to the general. Here you can tap mayor. The mayor will show in that the current voltage is uh, five volts because I connect the wire to the five volt out pins. So that's a five volt. And what if I, yeah, just uh, unscrew the sensor, uh, the, the wire and connect to another, like uh, uh, connect to the shulker capacitor here. There's a, a voltage pin and then attach to that the voltage will be two volt. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, how the data logger being used in a very simple demonstration. And after that, yeah, I can scan the QR code on the device. I already, uh, I already been, I already added the device uh, to our account just for better uh, demonstration. That's for that's this hack hour, uh, hack hack hours. So that's this one, and uh, I chose that. And there you go. Uh, the latest um, uh, value will be there. You can see some historic records um, uh, every five minutes, and that's uh, that's the apps do. And also, uh, that's uh, the first part of the lab demo. I hope you guys uh, give a, a brief uh, intro uh, introduction about how it works. Uh, and later, I have this new sense to introduce. It's a uh, sense cap, S two one one zero sensor builder. The actual reason for building this project is uh, uh, we can design every sensor by ourselves, and uh, that's uh, well uh, not fulfill the needs from the uh, user or community. But Seed Studio already have uh, hundreds of uh, sensors already. Why not just uh, bring them up? So we have a growth system. Uh, so we designed this uh, little box and uh, there is the shell board uh, mounted shell uh, based on RP2040 and also you can based on other modules, but right now just this module. And then I connect a CO2 sensor groove here, and there is a space lived for that. And then the uh, SHA will automatically read in the values and convert the value and uh, wipe it up as of IS485 sensor. And the Source code is on the page, there is a link and you can play with if you have the device. And uh, yeah, it already supports uh, over 10 growth by default, the firmware. You can, if you want to play with other, yeah, other growth, there's already drivers that are just put it into the source code and compile it. Uh, you will have your sensors, different sensors. Like recently, uh, the radar sensor is popular. You can't uh, make one with that. The gas sensors. Uh, that's something uh, about the sensor builder. And uh, for this uh, demonstration, I just uh, take another, uh, yeah, uh, data logger or DTO wire the terminal like. Uh, uh, IS-485 sensor type and configure the configure the sensors. And let me just uh, dive into the app. Press this button for second, three seconds. The LED will blinking and choose the sensor. And you will see the protocol right now is IS485 model bus. It's a data logger. 
And uh, if I press mayor, uh, it, it has um, 50 and 50, then I remember the one of 10. And here you got the value on the, uh, on the app. And let's go to the settings. Uh, the first, uh, the upper uh, uh, spacing is pretty much the same, just to choose the networks, the frequency pan, the intervals, the package points. Uh, and here, uh, sensor setting, we choose IS485 and the board rate um, 96. And mobile service could be one, could be other based on your sensor proof. And power voltage is just, just powered by five volt. And we have what I said a five second warm up time because uh, gas sensor normally have a warm up time. And yeah, and measurement number is three. We can measure 10 measurement at once. So then go to the settings. Let me, yeah. The settings they just uh, there you just uh, configure the register uh, modes and also there's formula to uh, to convert the result in a proper way you want it and then also it send it to uh, press send means you down link um, down link not down link just to configure uh, devices in action to the device uh, via Bluetooth. So that's uh, something already being paired. And then when we break the sensor, we'll flash and quick flash, that means uh, the sensor joined the network. Very easy to <coughs> debug. And then I will go to my device page. There's a sensor build CO2 sensor already there. You can see the value of the CO2 is actually a little bit higher uh, during this hour because uh, we got three people here. So the value is just increasing. Okay, I think I just uh, share two demos of how SenseCap uh, DTU and how SenseCap Sensor Builder works. Um, Travis, yeah, that's something I wanna share today. Oh, this is fantastic. Um, no, no, I'm absolutely a huge fan of these sensors. And I think everyone needs to understand the, the magnitude of being able to support all of the Grove sensors. I mean, if, if, if you go look up Grove sensors, I mean, how many have you released at this point? There's like 400 or something, right? Um, it's, it's quite a lot. Yeah, and yeah. right now we, uh, we call the community to co-create Grove system for us. I think yesterday they just announced a, a lightning sensor. And I think that's a super help for, for you right now, Travis, right? I think uh, outside it's raining and lightning in your location, right? <laughs> right right now, yeah. So uh, knock on wood, we, we don't lose power tonight. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But um, no, just the flexibility that these give you. And I, I, I want you to say it because I, I don't want to get this wrong, but uh, the price point on these is very low. Yes, uh, 79. 79, yeah, yeah. we try to Sales make girl. it affordable. <laughs> Sales girl. So um, we, we, we try to make it very affordable so that uh, people can use it in many different scenarios. We really want to see like this emerging needs, which we might not have, think, uh, have thought of, but they might be like applicable in many other scenarios as well. Absolutely. I, I mean, that's, that's w one of the lower cost sensors out there. I mean, that, that, that's incredible. But <clears throat> with the protocols that this supports, 
you can pretty much put anything, any type of sensor that can talk on a wire on the network using this thing. I mean, um, um, it, it, it's really phenomenal what all this supports, so. Thank you so much. So, uh, Travis, can I take a few minutes to quickly introduce some of the use cases of the S2100? Violet, please do. Please do. Hi, everyone. This is Violet. I would like to quickly share with you about a few use cases of the S2100. Um, so we have our partners, uh, UCA Tech, like UCA Technologies. They have a strong focus on environmental sensing, and they use this uh, S2100. You can see from the photo here, right above the solar panel, and connected to our S1000 is the 10-in-1 uh, weather sensor. So with this uh, connected to the external power, uh, solar power, they deployed it in the um, for the real estate uh, customers. So what they do is on the one hand, like when the real estate company need to build a certain campus, no matter for residential or for commercial or industrial buildings, they will deploy the weather stations there. And then they uh, you can will, uh, either depending on the customer's needs or you can uh, own uh, like service, they will have the SunScap M1 uh, helium gateway deployed in those areas to provide coverage. And then they will deploy the weather stations in that area to collect the environmental data. So when they are under construction, like this whole area, they will have the weather data for the construction management team about, uh, for example, when there's a very strong wind speed or wind direction or very strong rain, then they need to consider now it's not safe for the construction. So they need to have this certain threshold to put a pause in the construction. And then when it comes back to normal, then they can come back to construction. So this is like during construction, but on the other hand, when this project finishes construction, they will continue to have the weather data, like weather station in the campus, like in the residential building or like others like commercial building, so that they will be able to provide the micro microclimate data to the residents who are living in this area. So this is um, a user case that is deployed in South Africa at the moment. And the second use case uh, is uh, deployed in Denmark and now it's rolling out in other countries in Europe as well. So it's developed by our partner, Lincoln. They uh, develop the, the solution to monitor silo contents in real time. Like uh, for them, like not, not exactly like real, real time, but like for every five minutes or every uh, 15 minutes or even 30 minutes that is good enough. And then uh, they have um, connected the sensors to our S2100 data logger and to monitor the silo content uh, and see like how much has been consumed. And then they will have better um, ideas about what actions to take. And the similar uh, solution can actually be used in oil, uh, oil tank monitoring as well, so that they can have save money, save the time and carbon dioxide. How that works is like in the past, the solution, they need need one gateway for on each of the silo or each of the tank and then one gateway and one sensor for like from other technologies and it's really very expensive and it's not easy to install but now they have the lower wind coverage in the whole area and then they all only need them uh, like each of the four sensors in in the four four legs of the silo and then they can monitor it so it saves them time their time in purchasing the devices and save the uh, save the money in purchasing the devices save the team's time in installing the devices and also with the monitoring of the the volume of the silo they know better actions instead of like they may go there to fill it up earlier or like um or too late this is similar for oil tank monitoring so that it can save the cost in logistics to save the carbon dioxide. And with the historical data provided, they can provide some forecast for future management as well. So this is the, the user case in Denmark. And then uh, the last one is not actually a user case, but is being used in many scenarios. I would like to take this as, as an example to show you that um, 
we have pH sensor, and then we got request from the community and say, hey, do you provide Lorawan pH sensor? And at the very beginning, we'll say, okay, we have the pH sensor, we have the S2100, and then we list it on the product page and say, you can choose it, and then you can connect it by yourself, like what Kevin just showed them. And But on the other hand, when the, this kind of request increase, we will say, okay, now, since the request is a lot, we don't want each one of you to configure by yourself and connect it to solder them. So we actually turn it into an integrated lower band pH sensor. So you can see from here before, it's like a list of sensor probes that you can connect, but on the right, we actually have the sensor ready for you to use and onboard on the, on the app and on the platform within a few minutes. So this is what we want to do. We, on the one hand, uh, like for the S2100, it has the capability to connect to many sensors uh, like RS485 or GPIO or analog. And then feel free to let us know what kind of um, sensors that you want so that we can expand the collection for you to connect it to S2100. But on the other hand, if there are a lot of needs for certain type of probes, then also let us know so that we can integrate them into this uh, like single node LoRaWAN sensor directly. And coming back to the, the, the um, discussion earlier, you asked about like whether the S2100 can support multiple sensors at the same time. So we uh, recently, we got these uh, questions a lot, especially when we are at the trade shows. So, and so happy to see that you are like the, the participants in these hex hours are also concerning about that. So uh, the team is working on it and we will let you know when in this feature is available. So if you need any other features features or functions for our products or need other products or like other support, let us know. And we want to hear your voice and we will take actions. Thank you. And the last thing I would like to mention is not exactly on the S2100, but it's embedded in this, uh, in this example. So what C has been doing is like in the past, we might know uh, uh, us as someone who provides open source hardware, but and then later that we provide the hardware devices, like industry grade devices. But then um, now when we, we realize there are actually a lot of needs in very specific verticals. So now we are working on, with different partners to provide solutions. So this is an example uh, of the um, uh, smart farming, like smart poultry farm solution in this uh, in this user case, like in this solution, they use our environmental sensor in it. There are lower wind uh, air temperature, humidity, light, carbon dioxide, et cetera. And then also like what I showed earlier about the silo monitoring that they collect S2100 to other sensors to monitor the silo content. And then apart from the lower wind devices, we also have to have other edge devices like um, the PLC controllers and then also read computer series, AI uh, products that is based on NVIDIA. So we actually managed to combine the long range and low power consumption features of the sensors with the um, edge AI products into one solution. And then with our software and cloud services, um, the, the farm, like farm managers or like the operators on the farm, they will be able to see from the cloud about like um, whether the ventilation is working well or not with the, the heat map there, maybe this spot is super hot or maybe um, like uh, when they look at the image collected by the edge devices from the camera, they will be able to know, oh, this chicken is working a little bit funny. Maybe it's not, not feeling well. Or maybe this chicken has been eating too, uh, like eating too uh, less, um, not not eating too much, or maybe they have been sleeping too much. So this kind of abnormals can be detected and then can provide insights for for people to manage the farm more efficiently and with lower cost and lower power, like a manpower input. So this is like um, IKEA showroom that we provide. So we collaborate with partners to provide the solution. And then uh, if you are looking for solutions, let us know. Or if you're working on solutions, let us know. And we would like to uh, work on very specific solutions directly. Yes, chickens. <laughs> So uh, is someone hungry when hearing the word chicken now? <laughs> was was one of the very first helium hacks. I talked about chickens ah, in lower land. So really, um, people knew me as the chicken guy for a while. Ah, it was a long time ago. 
Now let's work on the chicken solution. There, there is something uh, consistent going forward as well, right? <laughs> but um, one thing I, I do want to throw in here, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm kind of losing my voice, but um, uh, the software uh, for the SenseCap sensors, including Mate, work on Macs, not just on um, mobiles. <laughs> And uh, so you uh, can, I can actually load this up, you know, on my, um, on, on my computer and use it just like I would on my phone. Mm -hmm. And that is awesome. <laughs> um, that, that I, I just thought that was fantastic when I saw that you could do that. And it's good. I, I never saw that I can use them at a um oh, at there we go. <laughs> so and so Trevor uncovers the, the miss like a, a new feature of it. Yeah, what one, uh, one missing part I uh, I forgot is uh yeah the man app just uh, help you onboard the the devices easily and get to the relative yeah. Are you sharing this now? Yeah, already. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but back end, we also provided this portal. And like just now, the sensor here uh, I built, uh, you can see the channels, uh, the, the data. Uh, there's uh, 10 parameters in here uh, to submit the value and here. And also on the table side, uh, you can export all the things, uh, export all the uh, data, and uh, for further, yeah, further uh, checking or something. And also, that here we have API case. Uh, I don't show much, and uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, the API case just for further integration if you want to subscribe it into your uh, system. Yeah, that's the missing part. I just, uh, yeah, showing that. Also, the SenseCap protocol supports MQTT protocol mm -hmm. and uh, other API. Yeah, ah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's huge. And, uh, and the last page here is a catalog. Uh, yeah, I guess you want to check the 200 pages. <laughs> uh, here is a catalog, but yeah, don't be scared. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of fun inside. You can see the modules, the, the IoT devices, the gateway, the age devices, or some new device will come out this year. Okay. Yeah, no, there's there's all sorts of incredible devices in the catalog. It, it, it was like... um. I don't know. It was like Christmas. It was it was like the holidays. Just looking through this thing. So, yeah. Very cool stuff. And and so um, if someone, I, I guess if someone is using the SenseCap Helium console, uh, that's effectively treating these as kind of managed devices, right? Where they don't have to deal with data credits or the Helium console. Um, they just go, they can deal directly with the Mate app and onboard and use the the SenseCap, even though it is still using the Helium network, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Because we want to give the flexibility to our offering to users. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it scales incredibly well to mobile as well as, you know, just a web interface for all the charts. I mean, it looks good. <laughs> It looks really, re really nice. All right. Uh, I think uh, there might be some, yeah, some friends have questions if you want to jump out. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't mind, um, you know, fielding some questions here. Um, if anyone, if anyone has questions for the team, now's the time to ask them. So, um, you know, please unmute your mic and step up. Uh, you mentioned uh, custom solutions. Is there a contact that we should reach out to for that? Yes, yeah. but please. Oh, let me bring the, the uh, Ina into the chat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
And um, could you maybe explain a little bit about what fusion is over at Seed? I know a number of people have asked about this and wanted to kind of discuss it while, while I had you on here. Uh, the fusion services? Yeah. yeah. Uh, first, uh, the fusion services, yes, I think it uh, started quite a long time ago. Yeah, it's, I, I don't remember how many years back. <laughs> yeah, the fusion services starting the, 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 that part of services is uh, we want to bring the fast and uh, and a low cost uh, PCB manufacturing for. Yeah. You can show this. You can show them this PCB and uh, from model. To US, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, never mind. Yeah, just uh, in the back 10 years, I think the PCB uh, made the PCB is quite expensive. And uh, we have the resources, we have the factories. So we put the service on there, and people just download, up, upload the Gerber file, and boom, and then you can. Place order right away with a uh, reasonable price and uh, shipping uh, to the PCB to globally uh, to your home address or office uh, in just one week or two weeks based on the layer of the PCB. That's that's where we begin. And later on, uh, people just not only wanted to make PCB, they want a PCBA. How about that? So we offering some uh, uh, open uh, open pod libraries on the website, uh, like the Groove uh, connectors or some uh, uh, like Xiao, like well E5 modules put on our website. You can, you can have a discount if you choose uh, Fusion services. If you based on the well E5 modules to build your own or own devices, you have discount or based on the modules. And then uploading the bomb, up your material and uh, <coughs> Yeah, you can you can have uh, ten PCB shipping to your address. You can, and then for in the debugging, and then the prototype is working. You have your own board, your own design, your know, very short time and a reasonable cost. Yeah, that's where Fusion Services began, and the two stage PCB, PCB, and one next is some guys may build the product for project, for scale, for business, for product use. And we're also for offering the OEM services or for OEM services in large scale. So that will be handled by people, by engineers, by the team, by the supplier, by all of the, uh, the resources we have. So that's uh, Fusion Services, yeah. And then, so if I want to design and build out a project you know, maybe even based around like the data loggers, um, you know, using using some sensors, you know, and the enclosures. I have a way forward to market, um, you know, with the with the seed ecosystem here. Right. Yes. Yes. Sure. Yeah. If the product is incredible, is uh, very useful, you can put it on Seed's website. We can co-work with you, like co-create and promote for you. And you have the yeah loyalty call fee, or you, you can earn some um, money based on that. And we just take care of the. Uh, I would say I should say that that the dirty work <laughs> of the hardware, of the management, of the supply chain, of buying chips and SMT mountains, uh, etc. Uh, but yeah, you just bring your. Uh, your idea, your your talent to design that, and the rest of that is taken care of by us. Yeah. Okay. And, and for example, I think um, you know something a lot of people on this call may know is um, you know uh, Paul or Disc ninety one did a project yeah. uh, based around the Wio terminal uh, for the Laura LoRaWAN field tester. Yeah, um, the field tester. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so you you can work with someone you know in a relationship to um, to put a product out or to, to bring a product to market if if that's yes we have intentions. a lot of uh, yeah we have a lot of use cases like the I think the famous one is IF Explorer uh, it's uh, the, the the guy the author is uh, based on uh, Euro and they have an incredible talent to building the IF test devices and we help them to design the enclosure doing the DFM, DFM 
and the making the PCB and the testing equipment, the test jigs, the test script, and putting them together to do the certification and then put it on our website for selling in our all distributors. And that's uh, uh, some um, cases, uh, use cases, yeah. Cool, very cool. So if you well, had a, uh, a GPIO <laughs> cable that you, uh, would Fusion do something like that? Would you do cables? Uh, cables. I'm talking yes, like maybe a GPIO to a, like a Grove connector, maybe a one layer PCB involved, something around, you know, like that. Um, would that be something that they would be into? Yeah, we have some cables on the OPL uh, library, but it's just the simple cables like the group, uh, group cables and that. But if you want a special design cable, that's been case by case. Uh, like uh, we have a very uh, high quality cable, like the antenna cable, that's uh, something did customization. So that I would, would suggest teams go to the product uh, ODM services or product in large scale services. Yeah. All right, great. And um we have to be a little careful uh, saying Grove connectors around here. Um, yeah. There, there, was, a, uh, there was a company yeah. recently that released a product that um, had a miss pinout um, a Grove connector on it that would fry an E5 when, if you plugged it in. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah they, had the, uh, they had the power reversed. So, yeah. The power yeah. of the data lines are reversed. <laughs> yeah. I, I blew out a couple of the WIO E5s uh, on that thing, but yeah. Um, you know there are, uh, uh, why it called WIO? Yeah. W-I-O. Yeah. yeah, a few years ago, yeah, when we were sitting in the office, well, how should we call a device? It's called a wireless, uh, wireless I-O, wireless input and output, because at that time we, uh, we made uh, a wire devices connecting multiple growth. One side is input, one side is output. That's where where well coming from, <laughs> okay. Well, and, and I just, uh, okay, I'm guilty of learning um, most about this mm -hmm. online. So, um, yeah, I, I probably mispronounce a whole, whole heap of things, but. Um, no, it's okay, uh, I just want to share the. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. And those yeah. are great little terminals. Those are great little terminals. Yeah. Yeah. And if anyone wants to, um, you know, look further into some of this stuff, go to Hackster.io. Um, you know, uh, the IoT Into the Wild project um, has a lot of great projects that you can dig into over there. Yeah, so this year, so we have uh, launched a uh, context in the Hackster. Um, we take um, over 100 projects and uh, over 500 and, uh, yeah, uh, submissions. Yeah, That's a great. lot. Just creating things, and you know, uh, we might doing it again this year. Yeah, we. I saw uh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and all of those um, submissions, I mean, have links to GitHub. You know, to the to the repositories. So um, uh, definitely check those out if you're developing on this ecosystem. <clears throat> <clears throat> But uh, Violet, um, we were going to give away some shirts today, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, what do you think? What do you think? Um, we have, uh, these are special edition shirts um, that are both helium and seed um, t-shirts. So yes. they're, they're um, not quite what I'm wearing here. So... <laughs> Take care, Travis. Your voice is so um, yeah. yeah. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried to. I'm kind of stressed on it right now. Um, <laughs> thanks. And so, what I'd like to hear is um, is someone just uh, jumping on and saying something you want to develop um, with, with anything in the seed catalog. I mean, 
Um, there's so many, so many cool, um, you know, products that have been released recently. That um, there, there's so much potential here, you know. Um, this is the E5 uh, Mini Dev Board. Yeah, you're uh, trying to see. You have a lot of. Hopefully, people can jump in, uh, uh, in or I guess rather speak up on the on the call. Uh, in the meantime, I just noticed there was a question from David. I don't know if this is the right crew to answer this, but a question about the LoRaWAN stack that's being used um, on the. I guess it would be the the Xiao, or or the B, I'm sorry, it'd be the E5 chip. Oh, there's David. Um, hello, I guess. You. Nice to see you again, I guess. How are you? Hi, Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Hey. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, I was there listening to you. Great job, right? So, yeah. Just I do. The question. Yeah, great, great. Impressed. We are all impressed about what you did, right, in, in some tech here. We are all yeah. following you. So the question was about which stack are you using, right? Are you using the older version or the latest evolution or LBM kind of? Um, I think the stack we're using is um, yeah, 1.03, yeah. Yeah, okay. And you're using yeah, what you call the Dora Mac node? Yeah, it's quite, it's, it's quite a now. And uh, I think later uh, in the newer product, we will yeah, hear some of the, uh, the newer stack, yeah. Great, great. Keep in and touch way, if I have yeah, any question, so, of course. Yeah, like the trackers we are building right now. Yeah. Exactly, this is the one in which we are more interested, right? In the team <laughs> here. Yeah, well, so well, let's, well. Stay, let's stay in touch on that. Great. Yeah, sure. Are you using uh, RTOS on that with with the stack, or are you using for the for the RP twenty forty? Which what 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 are you using Arduino or C plus plus or the just uh, 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 Arduino? Yeah, Arduino. Arduino. Okay. Yeah. I think I will. Uh, I think better just share the mm -hmm. the slides uh, to tonight. Yeah. yeah. I think that the, uh, on the page there is a source code uh, link. Uh, later, you can mm -hmm. uh, download that and to take a look. Any more questions? Yeah. Any other questions? Hi, old. It's, uh, it's Nathan here. Um, look, I'm uh, fantastic uh, product you got here. I'm really interested in once you get your multiple sensor um, uh, software or, or capability ongoing. Uh, just to give you an idea, I was at a uh, agricultural farm uh, earlier on this week. Uh, they're really interested in combining the pH with the soil moisture, uh, temp and EC as well. So combining it all in one. And the other parts too is they're actually interested in uh, measuring all these temperatures in the soil at different levels. So I've been able to com combine multiple probes at different levels. Um, they got them really excited. Uh, thanks. Okay, and yeah, noted. <clears throat> and yeah, thank you. And so pH sensor right now, I think it's, it's uh, available. It's available for the press order. Yeah. And for the soil moisture, moisture in different levels for, for now, we do not have a uh, yeah, uh, uh, one um, all in one uh, sensors, different level. But yeah, but for now, uh, if you want to mirror more, you have to um, uh, plug multiple sensors for now. But yeah. Nathan, can you send us an email and then I can follow up with you about the, the needs for this different kind of products and give you recommendations? Oh, excellent. Thank you. I, I can show my email in here. Yeah, thank you to, yeah. MPK science sensor. This will uh, ask a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's quite a challenge. Yeah, especially wanting to have a, a decent sensor and PK sensor. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think we will have it in the near future, right? Yes. Because uh, according to our research, MPK sensor out there, like you, like the traditional ways to get a sample and take it to the lab and test. But if you want it for the like a wireless sensor, then we do not find any solution that is accurate and reliable enough to allow us to think, okay, now it's a good <laughs> green light to go. So we haven't developed yeah. any MPK sensors yet. 
Yeah, normally uh, the sensor outside is just using the EC or something to calculate mm -hmm. the MPK, but it's not so yeah so accurate. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, carbon a carbon dioxide sensor to be used in the soil. Mm. Someone has buried in the soil, right? That is yeah, well. I have. Yeah, I have to say the sensor right now, uh, we are not building uh, the purpose to bury it in the soil. But actually, I do heard customer buying the sensor, uh, white plan cover to protect it and bury it in the soil. They uh, they have use cases based on that, but uh, but honest speaking, yeah, I'm responsible for that. Mm -hmm. uh, if that sensor for now, the probe is not designed for bearing under the ground. Uh, it yeah, it, it it doesn't. But if you want to try, I yeah, you, you can love do to that. Hear about yeah, I'd love to hear about the use case um, on that because we have a, a project um, that, that is, you know, in, in in halfway in the works, and you're and you're already part of it. We already have an installation in in Liberia with this, where we're measuring climate change, and uh, you know, the exchange between the ground to the trees to the foliage to the canopy and into the atmosphere. Um, if we could hit the soil too. Um, even if we need to wrap it, I mean, whatever the, the current you know solution might be, would be helpful. So, in, any insights or, or uh, you know, in, anything you can send me on that would be appreciated. Okay, okay. I think um, uh, what uh, what uh, we can talk offline mm -hmm. mm -hmm. about this, right? Yeah, George. Let me follow up with you, and then we can discuss that more in detail. Yeah, no rush. It's, you know, in the works. So, you know, we have, <laughs> we have time. You don't need it tomorrow. But, you know, I just, just wanted to throw that request out. I want to just uh, also uh, just tell you folks in a very lovely presentation tonight and um, exceptional work you, you're all doing. So uh, we appreciate it uh, around here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Tonight. Happy to be here. Yeah. So, and the giveaway, how, how will we handle it? Yeah. The giveaway, Violet, you're on top of this. So um, okay. you're in charge. <laughs> This is how. So what we will have is we have two t-shirts that I, I just uh, showed the picture in the in the group chat, and uh, we will give away a S twenty one S twenty one hundred DTU as well. So three three uh, little things to give away. Uh, how about we give away the the t-shirts first? And uh, I'm not sure about like the size, so that you, I think we can have. Um, a, I think this is to to test who has the fastest, um, like type speed. So for for the um, for the T-shirt, I will type something in the in the chat, and then follow the instruction. Who is the first one to reply to it? Like the first two will get the T-shirt, and then you can. I love it. Me. And I then, love it. Uh, get Great. How about, okay. How about just okay. play the game? You are in the taxi, not no. in the Uber. That's it. You just uh, made a question. Yeah. Ah, right. Uh, you are learning. Yeah. You are learning. Yes, play the games a lot. On even even on Uber, they have the screen there. So Kevin uh, was uh, suggesting that. Um, like I, I play a game that like, but I don't have a question in my mind right now. Who has a question that you can contribute? And like, uh, let me finish the, the rules first. Like I type it there and then you apply and the first two will get the t-shirt. But then for the DTU, I want to see the actual use. Right? So we will have another rule for that. So the t-shirts for now, what would be the question? Nice. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't type So get ready, that. get ready, yeah. Okay, get ready. So I think I should ask this question instead. Like, um, um, I, I will uh, ask, uh, like, I will speak directly and then you can type. So uh, we mentioned growth sensors out there. Like, so do you know how many growth uh, products that we have out there? It's not the exact number, just like how many hundred of them? Okay, wow. wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we come back. I think um, because it, the, the growth um, modules that we have is 
uh, more than 400. So the first one will be Nathan, and the second one is George. So we'll be like 408 and 425. So we will get two t-shirts to Nathan and to George. Okay. Congratulations, so folks. 400,000 nice. is, <laughs> is a, a big goal. Sure. Thank you about it. So I will present yeah. it to the whole product team, and we need to work on that. Hashtag okay. soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and the next, uh, the next one for the DTU. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I have made the question. Okay. Okay. Well, well, hold uh, on. One, uh, one thing on this, I would like whoever wins this to come back on the show and tell yeah. us what they're doing with it. So. Um, okay. Great. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Uh, the question is, what is the capacity of the battery? Good one. Oh. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you're the winner. That first one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Yes. Good. So the, the first uh, is key. Right? Which is a huge battery, by the way, folks. Um, it, I mean, it's mm -hmm. not rechargeable. You can buy replacements on Amazon. The part number is listed on, on the documentation. Uh, I mean, with an Amazon link, I believe, even. Um, and, and so it, it is easy to replace those. Um, but yeah, that's an enormous battery. So, uh, um, it'll hold you for a year or two. <laughs> I mean, I'm joking many, many, much longer than that, but, um, uh, I better to, yeah, to email. But, yeah. Uh, I'm having, so I put it in the chat. Now you can DM me, uh, on discord. I'm in the happy hex hour discord channel. So you can look for me in the channel and DM me, or you can send me an email to violetsc.cc, and then I will send you the giveaways. Yay! Yeah! Congratulations, folks. That's great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Violet, Kevin, Jenkin, thank you so much for the presentation tonight. Um, I, I know we've run a little over, it, it happens around <laughs> here, but um, I, I really appreciate it. You're always welcome on the show. Um, I, and thank you for sharing oh, the I'm catalog. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, you, so thank you. Thank you guys, bye-bye. Bye. Everybody, yeah, have a great one. Yeah. Bye. Excellent. Bye. And, bye, -bye. Um, uh, since we're over, we're just going to call that a show tonight. All right, folks, we can. Uh, there's other things that we can take care of inside the channel on Discord. I'm losing my voice, folks. So take care. thanks, folks. Um, everyone else who joined us. Thanks. Um, next week, same bad time, same bad channel. See you, folks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.